Uh, two from um, the park that I met when I first came here. It taught me how to speak without having a, a southern twang. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the f friends that I made that first year, uh, uh, one fellow. Lawrence, he works for uh, the Pentagon. Oh. So, um, so what uh, JD was telling me, and uh, JD that lived down from uh, on where we used to live, oh. his uh, mother lived over there, and uh, we went to grammar school together. Um, how did the move from the the move to the, up north uh, change you or affect you? I was <laughs> footloose and fancy free. I had places <laughs> to go and I could go. I could. I, they taught me how to uh, get on the bus and go by myself, and I'm, I'm, I was worse than Jamila. <laughs> but, um, and I just got a, 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 it just, big city and everything else, and and uh, if I got, there was no sense in saying you're going to get lost. You better try to find your way, because there were no cell phones. And uh, most of the time you leave, if you go out, you only had enough to get you there back home. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times that uh, I might have uh, did something else with my money and had to walk home. It, 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 it was just so much to see, and I still didn't see it all. A lot of things that you all have seen now, I, I've never been to. Um, I think the first time I went to uh, a museum, um, what's museum? Museum of Science and Industry? No, I, I, I've been there. One with, one with Gloria. That was the first time that uh, New Sabo Museum. Oh, okay. They opened, uh, you all were smaller. Gloria and I took you all over there. That's the first time I'd been there. Well, you all go on trips all the time. I never got a chance. Well, they never took us anyplace. But just seeing the city, when I first came here, I didn't know. Well, Mama, Mama didn't go to that place that much anyway. When I first came here, I was five or six. Mama and I came to Chicago. But uh, I I didn't just run wild because Mama <laughs> wasn't gonna have that. <laughs> uh -huh. and most most things anywhere I wanted to go, I'd get over to Madison Street, and there was a shopping center on Pulaski Road. I'd walk there, walk back. Many times I walked from Union Park all the way downtown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they said, well, we, we didn't have no transportation when we got, you know, here. They didn't get a car until, uh, they didn't, didn't get a car. My brother got a car when I was about to graduate. And then he had to go to service, and I kept this car. I had learned how to drive then, and I kept this car. Till he came back out of service. But it was... It was something else in these tall buildings. I had never been on the second floor. And even now, when I go up so high, I get 
I get sick. Oh. Mm. But I don't know what that rough life turned out to be. Okay. I still I've seen a lot of stuff and most time when I when I did see a lot of things I was a, a meter mate and I was doing the driving around. Hmm. Um, how did pol politics influence it? Didn't. <laughs> Didn't want to be involved in it. Does that hurt so many? Uh, bad, well, not bad, well, it was bad things, but uh, had heard so many things that, about it, how they paid you, paid for your vote and everything. And I mean, I kept thinking, how can they pay for your vote? They don't know who you voted for. And that was just uh, a stigma that, that said that black folks were stupid because you can take all the money you want in the world, they still can't go in booths with you and vote. As long as you can read, vote, who you want, vote for who you want to vote for. You know, but try not to get in politics. I make my decisions from listening to them. When they don't do what they're supposed to do, then I just cross them off next time. <laughs> uh, my aunt and uncle influenced me to be a Democrat, so you know, so Republicans. Not mom and dad, my my daddy's brother. Um, when did you graduate high school? And what did you do after? June 17th, 1954. I, uh, I got a job at uh, A&P Stores, and I went to uh, junior college because my dad and him. My family said they couldn't afford to send me away to the uh, University of Illinois in Champaign where I wanted to go. I had been down there and uh, I visited with a, a friend of mine one weekend and uh, I wanted to go there. But I couldn't so I worked at uh, A&P as cashier. At that time I was making maybe ten dollars but by the time I left there, I think I was making a dollar five. They would give me two or three set raises every now and then, and I was a cashier. And when school, uh, school started in September, went to Wright Junior College, all the way from 1600 West to 1400 North, 2400 West, 1400, no, it's 1600 West, that's Austin, and uh, 400 North, I think, had to take the bus. So I left work. I worked from 9 to 12. I caught the bus because there was no, uh, well, Lake Street L, but I, I didn't know how to, the L cost more money than the bus at that time. So just get on the Bluebird bus, go all the way down to uh, Austin, take Austin bus across. Took an hour and some minutes to get there. And then you didn't get out until 8 something. You didn't, didn't get home until 10. And then if you had, um, when on the days that I had swimming, I had biology with lab after that. Uh, and that, that was tough. Because being in that hot pool, you get sleepy. And then I, I uh, you know, coming home. There was a couple of us, and then when they got out early and I had come home by myself, I was afraid that I was going to go to sleep and override my stop. Yeah. You know, and not knowing what things were like. I made it a year and a half. And, uh, and I got disgusted. And I decided I'm going to get married. Yeah, so um, 
what led you and Granddad A to want to join the military together? We were, how I said, boyfriend, girlfriend, just before we, uh, we, we had planned on going away to get some money for our education and uh, spend the minimum time in service to get some money and come back home and go to school and get married. That was our plan. But uh, he left right at the day after graduation, and my parents wouldn't let me go. He said, uh, we were fast girls going to the military. They only had uh, what they called the uh, wax. They didn't have uh, women in the military like they do today, each uh, branch of service. But some of the uh, people that I went to school with, high school, they are, well, they are retired from service now. They, uh, a couple of the girls went into service and they retired from that. But we have wanted to go to service together and see, see the world. I probably wouldn't mind flying. Because <laughs> I sure don't like to fly now. That's what we have planned to do. And then uh, I got mad and broke up with him. So he re up, re enlisted, and everything else. So I just went on and married somebody else. Um, is there a specific historical event that affected you that we the most? We have the assassination of the killing of Dr. Martin Luther King and the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy. When John F. Kennedy was assassinated, he was it working for the post office at that time and we heard it on, on somebody from the outside came and told us that he had been, uh, that he had died. We knew he had gotten shot. We went to our tour, but later on that night we found out that he had died. And we just stopped working. A lot of us got annual leave and took off and just, because we couldn't do no work. But that was the two main things that, uh, Yeah, the, really the historical stuff, all that, all the, all the fighting and stuff, that didn't hit me as bad as when uh, King and uh, Kennedy got killed. Is there anything else you want to say about your life or the years that you <laughs> lived that we haven't talked about? Some parts of it. I would change if I had to, uh, if I had the choice to live it over again, I would have uh, put more into my studies and went on to school and, and uh, became a, a pediatric nurse. However, I have uh, no complaints. So what I did achieve as um, a female without, without a college degree, and that for 22 years with uh, one of the largest banks in the Chicago area. And uh, the position I had, the staff assistant, that was uh, next to the assistant vice president, of one of the assistant vice president of the bank, which they had many, but in my department, in our department, a staff assistant. So that means when the officers was out and they got a problem, customer, I had to take care of. And they trust me with that. So. Yeah. Still working. <laughs> Still working.